Welcome back to the Iowa State Fair. The Republican presidential candidates are here this weekend, just 10 days from the debate in Milwaukee. Meantime, Jaron, Democrats are moving on, abandoning Iowa as the first in the nation. This weekend, we talked with Iowa Democratic Party Chairwoman Rita Hart. As we look to this cycle and, and look to next cycle, what are you guys doing to ensure, at least for Democratic candidates, this doesn't become flyover country when you look at the oh, cycle? Oh, absolutely. You know, and, you know, I think that that's the, the thing, is that here in Iowa, we have always prided ourselves on doing a great job of vetting presidential candidates. We're very, we have a very active electorate who ask very intelligent questions. They do their homework. Is there a concern this could get messy at all, at least when you look at the calendar? You know, that remains to be seen. I think everything is so in flux yet. And, and the exciting thing for us is that we're going to move forward on a more inclusive process. We're going to make sure that people that have not been able to have their voices heard on presidential selection now will be able to do that. People that work third shift, people with small kids, people who can't go out in the middle of a snowstorm will be able to participate in this presidential selection process, and that's exciting. So let's bring in a Democratic strategist is Joe Zapecki. Joe, good to have you here. Thanks for having me. So we just heard uh, from Rita Hart there talking about these changes to the primary calendar. How big of a deal are some of these changes? Well, it seems like a really big deal, but the reality is calendars change, this process changes. I'm old enough to remember back in 2008 when Nevada was moved into what's known as the early window, and that was a move by the Democratic Party to ensure a more diverse and representative group of folks had that big role to play in selecting our nominee. Adding states like Michigan and Georgia into that mix going forward ensures a more open process that more people from more diverse backgrounds get to have their say. I think that's a great thing. I want to talk about the Iowa State Fair this weekend where Matt is. Also, some of the Democratic candidates who are also there, RFK Jr., Marianne Williamson as well. What do you say about the argument that Democrats should have uh, primary debates? I, I would say that these are not serious campaigns and these are this is not the time and place for what I would call sort of also-rans or gadflies to, to, to make their case. We have a popular incumbent president who is a Democrat with $77 million cash on hand. He's going to be the Democratic nominee for president. He's going to run a great general election campaign because he is delivering for the American people. That's what we need to focus on, not folks who are you know, shouting from the, from the rooftops and want to be heard. The Republican primary debate, first presidential primary debate in Milwaukee now just 10 days away. I'm curious what you are going to be most paying attention to as a Democrat. Well, the thing I can't stop wondering about is how long we're going to pretend this is an ordinary nominating contest and we're going to have debates. This is a really remarkable time in American history. The far and away front runner, former President Donald Trump, whether it's a 20 point lead, 30 point lead or 40 point lead, has basically taken the Republican Party hostage and is doing this will he or won't he around the debate. To me, that's all besides the point. We know based on our lived experience that Mr. Trump could lose 50 states out of 50 to somebody like Ron DeSantis in the Republican primary, and he would never acknowledge DeSantis's legitimacy. The, the Republican Party is in an absolute box, and the fact that they're going to have seven or eight, maybe nine candidates on stage here in a few days really misses the point, and that entire debate is really going to be about Donald Trump, whether he's there or not, with enormous questions that have grave implications for the future of our democracy. If I had to bet, the first question asked of that debate is going to be, if you are elected president and take the oath on, in January of 2025, will you pardon Donald Trump of any crimes he is convicted of? Th that's pretty remarkable that that's where we are, whether it's 10 days out or whether it's 10 months from now. This is not normal times. This is not a normal nominating process that the Republicans find themselves in. We expect to hear from Mr. Trump this week on whether he plans on showing up to Milwaukee for that debate. Do Democrats want him to be here? Do they want to see him on that stage? I think whether he's there or not, the story is going to be about him. That's not you know, for us to say or determine. I will say the other sort of 10-ton weight dragging down Republicans right now is the issue of abortion. That will, of course, be front and center in the debate. We saw in the last week another reddish state, Ohio, resoundingly stand up for and defend women's reproductive freedoms. That is a political loser for the Republican Party right now. And so when you combine the problems that Mr. Trump poses 
and the issue of access to abortion, Republicans find themselves in a world of hurt right now. I want to talk about 2024 and the Democratic side. You worked on presidential campaigns. How important is Wisconsin to the Biden administration? Oh, cr critically important. We have seen the president here and the vice president here a lot. Now, whether that's for rallies or whether that's to go tour projects that are happening because of the bipartisan infrastructure project that the president was able to sign into law, or whether it's because of the Inflation Reduction Act and new utility scale solar plants that are gonna be coming online or at least being constructed in the next year. I think the president's gonna be here a lot, and I think that's great because the more people see Joe Biden, they will see the contrast between his common sense agenda, bipartisan legislative wins, and a Republican Party that is totally lost right now. A lot to watch over the next couple of months and next year. Joseph Pecky, thanks for being here. We always appreciate your insight and you analysis. Bet. Thank you. Up next, high drama at the state's high court. Liberals taking the majority. We have a rare interview with Chief Justice Annette Ziegler next.